guys, it's Quinn here. If you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm notices me. This video will contain spoilers for Netflix's Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem just released on Netflix. It is, of course, based on the book series The Remembrance of Earth's Past by Lushishin. And yes, I mean based on the series because the first season doesn't just cover the first book in the series, The Three Body Problem. It moves into the second book, The Dark Forest, and even has scenes from the third book, Death's End. It shows that they are thinking about this as a series, and they have every plan to continue the show. In fact, season two is already in the works from what I hear. They have the task of establishing the essence of the entire series, not just the first book. Now you guys know that I'm a huge fan of the book series. I have done several videos covering it on this channel. I definitely was apprehensive about this show uh, because I'm a big George R. R. Martin fan, huge fan of the A Song of Ice and Fire books, and I didn't really enjoy what the creators of its adaptation, Game of Thrones, did with the last several seasons of that show. When I heard that they were the ones doing the Three Body Problem, I was nervous to say the least. But I was willing to give it a chance. This series, unlike A Song of Ice and Fire, is finished. So what did I think of this show? Is it a good show? Is it worth the watch? I would have to say it is definitely worth the watch, unequivocally so. It is absolutely worth the watch. It's good science fiction, but how does it work as an adaptation of the book? Well, let's get into this. One of the major criticisms of Le Chichin's series is the flatness of the characters. It's a high concept science fiction book series. The characters are not the focus, like really at all. I think the creators of the show were aware of this criticism, and I think they did a good job of remedying it. Now, I would say that the story in the Netflix show is actually very close to the book so far. It absolutely lives within the essence of the novel and even improves upon certain aspects in the book. The nature of the Three Body Problem game, for instance, it makes a lot more sense in the show than it does in the book. Um, it makes a lot more sense that the game would be this advanced sensory technology rather than what is essentially a VR headset and a VR suit in the book. I can pretty comfortably say that almost every major beat from the books is present in the show. You have the message from the Trisolarans, the San T as they are called in this, and that is not a change in name as some people have been saying. The San T is actually what they are called in the original Chinese version of the book. The translated version is the version that uses the name Trisolaran, so San T is actually more accurate. Um, they also get into the Wallfacer project, they get into the Staircase project, they get into Planetary Defense, aka the Space Force, it's subtly mentioned, they get into Cryonics, they get into Sophons, they get into the interdimensionality of the universe, they get into nanotechnology and it plays the same role that it does in the book. They get into Tianming's fairy tales, their setup. They get into the Dark Forest Hypothesis and Deterrence Game Theory, they're both subtly brushed upon even, for those that are paying attention. It's all there. Um, I've seen certain people say that the story is unrecognizable. Well, it might be unrecognizable if you've only read the first book. But those of you that have read the entire series, you know that they are setting up various aspects that occurred later in the series relatively accurately. Where the differences start to occur is the characters. Many of the characters from all three books are broken down into several new characters. So any rumors about gender swapping or race swapping aren't exactly true because they're mostly new characters. The thing is, the original book is written in Chinese and almost all of the characters are Chinese. It is from a Chinese perspective. This is the Western adaptation there was a Chinese adaptation that was released last year that only covered the first book. But this is the Western adaptation, and changes were expected, and that was never any secret. Also, this story isn't about the characters necessarily, it's about humanity as a whole. So how significant are these character changes really? Let's get into it. The character Wang from the first book 
has been broken down into three different characters. You have Jack, Jin Cheng, and Augustina. Wang completely disappears and is never mentioned again after the first book. So this change kind of makes sense, considering that these characters will continue on in the series, except for Jack, of course. And these characters will adopt certain characteristics of other book characters. And then there's Da Shi, who is basically intact, but he is not Chinese by nationality in this. He is British by nationality. Um, and then we have Ya Wenjie, who is very similar to her book counterpart. Her backstory is almost identical, um, with some changes here and there, but we'll get into those a little bit later. And then there's Mike Evans. He is basically the same as he is in the book, with some minor changes. And then we have Thomas Wade, who I found to be awesome in this show. A great adaptation from the book counterpart. Thomas Wade is the man that gets stuff done, and for him the ends justify the means. Um, and then we also have Jin Cheng, who I mentioned earlier as having characteristics of Wang, but she is mostly Shang Xin. In fact, their names are one letter off. You have Shang Xin from the books and Chang Jin in the series, and she is perhaps a bit of AA as well. Um, if you've only read the first book again in the series, you might not have recognized Jin as one of the central characters in this series. She's absolutely Shang Xin. Um, Will is quite obviously Tianming, and his connection to Jin is fully explored and expanded on, and it is very close to the book counterparts. And as I said, for book readers, Tianming slash Will's fairy tales are also set up. We see multiple times that he is reading uh, books of fairy tales, and we see the image of paper boats floating on water multiple times as well. These are things that only people that have read the later books will recognize. And that's along with Will slash Tianming's cancer, his purchasing of a star through the Stars Our Destination project, his cooperation with the Staircase program, which like in the book was led by Thomas Wade and worked on by Shang Xin slash Jin. All of it from the removal of his brain to the seeds being sent was from the books. It is very close narratively speaking. I also predict that Augustina, who has many characteristics of Wang, including being a nanotech scientist and including seeing the countdown, will be given more characteristics of Shang Xin and AA as well. There was something about the interactions between Jin and Augustina that reminded me of the interactions between AA and Shang Xin in the books. And Raj, to me, seems almost certainly to be Zhang Bei Hai. He is not fully blossomed into the character yet, but it seems pretty clear that that is what they are setting up, that he will definitely fill the role of that character. And then we have Saul Doran, who has adopted the role held by Luo Ji in the books. The show moves past the first book and Saul develops into basically Luo Ji from the books. We see his assassination attempts, we see a version of his conversation with Ya Wenji, which is one of the most crucial scenes in the entire series. We see that he is elected as a wall facer, and like his book counterpart, he rejects his role, or attempts to. All of the major story elements are set up. All of these new characters are different from the book versions, but they fulfill the roles of the book counterparts pretty well in my opinion. The characters are interconnected. Emotionally, you relate to them more than the characters in the book. Their interpersonal relationships don't feel phoned in, and their individual storylines never feel drawn out or tedious, and always work to further the narratives. Just think about it, in the hours of content that I've made on the Three Body Problem series that you may have watched on this channel, how much of it do I spend talking about the characters or the intricacies of their relationships or interactions? Almost no time, because the focus of this series is not the characters, it is the science fiction. It focuses on the high concepts, not the characters. The characters take a back seat in the book. Characters are more important to TV shows, and even though the characters are changed, the important connections that the characters have that are necessary to the narrative, like the connection between Tian Ming and Shang Xin, are absolutely present in the show. But like I said, the characters themselves have been reworked. By including these new and reworked characters, the show adds more emotional weight to everything. For instance, 
in the book when Mike Evans' ship is destroyed. It just kind of happens and everyone moves on. But in the show, we see the emotional toll of the loss of so much human life. It really affects characters like Augustina. The scene itself is highly impactful in my opinion. And the way it shows how helpless Mike Evans and his followers are in the face of superior technology works, in my opinion, as a prelude to certain events later in the book series, which I will not spoil for those of you who have not read, but those of you who have read know exactly what I mean. Now, though the story is very similar to the book, there are definitely some simplifications. For instance, they never quite get into the factions of ETO. In fact, they never say ETO, Earth Trisolaris Organization, though ETO is very much present throughout this season. There are other simplifications as well, but nothing that, in my opinion, prevents you from understanding what is happening. In fact, I think that the streamlining of the narrative here actually works in favor of the show. The truth is, a science fiction novel, like I said, can have elements that work great in novel form, but in television form, that same thing might not work as well. The show made a lot of intelligent decisions, in my opinion, on what to alter. The show is made with the understanding as well that the best parts of the series are not the opening, not the first book. The events of The Dark Forest and Death's End are the heart of the series. The show cleverly establishes the events of the first book so that we can get to the events that actually define the series in a well-paced manner. Again, I'm trying to say all of this without spoiling the series, but if you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about. Throughout the show, we see humanity work together to take on this problem, just like the book. They develop new technologies to aid humanity through the war against Trisolaris. The books are all about the development of technology, and the show is about the same thing. They even go out of their way to bring up the fact that the development of technology will have severe limitations due to Sophon interference. They'll have to hone in on advancing the technology they already have, as their higher forms of research were limited. This is the exact same dilemma that is present in the book. There's an interesting thing that happens, I think. I think that people expect the wrong things from adaptations sometimes. Some books are more easily adapted than others. Some books need to be slightly different to fit the screen better. The Lord of the Rings is an example of something that makes many changes from the original books and is still viewed as an amazing franchise because the heart of the books are still there, even though several aspects are changed and several aspects are even improved upon and we of course have stanley kubrick's the shining versus stephen king's book the shining um famously divergent from the book and yet the soul of the book remains in my opinion even with the changes that netflix's through ready problem makes it is far closer to the essence of the source material than most adaptations are now, I was highly critical of D&D during the Game of Thrones era for being what I consider to be disrespectful to the source material. In my opinion, they have not done that here. And believe me, I would tell you if they did. The curious thing about this show is like the first book and the first third of the second book, it's just set up for the much larger events to come. This is a series that expands like no other. Dare I say I am hyped for season two. What I really love is that I know for a fact that this show is going to get people who otherwise may not have been at all interested in reading the books to read them. The concepts are present in the show, but I suspect that curious minds who desire the finer details will seek out the books after watching it anyway. I would say that my favorite episode was episode five. It was very well done in my opinion. I also thought that the show had a very strong opening. Now, I said I would talk about some of the changes with Yao Wenji. The huge bulk of her backstory is exactly the same. The only difference that is major is that her daughter is not Yang Dong, but instead the child of Yao Wenji and Mike Evans, who had a love affair back in the early days of ETO. This doesn't affect the narrative really at all, it simply provides more connective tissue between the characters. As some of you may know, last year the Chinese company Tencent released their adaptation of The Three Body Problem. It just covers the first book, and it was 30 episodes long. 
The Tencent show, which certain people seem to place on a pedestal, had tons of additions, changes, omissions. It even had direct pop culture references like TikTok dances, and a famous Chinese comedian was even present in a role that's not in the book, and he also appeared in Freebody-themed trailers that were present during the airing of the show. Um, it's not as fateful as an adaptation as people tend to pretend it is. Truthfully, it had plenty of alterations. The big difference between the Tencent version and the Netflix version is that the changes in the Netflix version make sense, while the changes in the Tencent version left me scratching my head most of the time. In my opinion, the Tencent version is too long, and certainly far too long-winded for a Western audience. There were many irrelevant characters added and repetitive scenes that went on and on, but the most egregious problem with the Tencent adaptation is the fact that they totally butchered Yao Wenji's backstory in what seems to be, to me, a blatant act of censorship on the part of perhaps the Chinese government. The actual death of Yao Wenji's father, as well as the cultural context surrounding it, is fully omitted from the Tencent show, in contrast to the Netflix show which opens with this exactly as the book does, and the scene is very close to the book and very brutal. This fact about Ya Wenji, the fact of how her father died, is key to Ya Wenji's thought process, is key to why she viewed humanity the way she did. Cutting this was a huge mistake on the part of the Tencent show, but I'm glad this was not cut from the Netflix show. David Benioff and Dan Weiss, alongside Alexander Wu, who I suspect is really keeping things together, have done a much better job with this adaptation than I ever expected. Um, not because of D&D's Game of Thrones debacle, but because this is not an easy series to adapt effectively by any stretch of the imagination. Adaptation is hard. Adapting a science fiction book that only science fiction book fans are going to read into a show for the masses is an extremely difficult task, especially while retaining the essence of the original thing. And they have done that here. I have to give them props where props are due. No television show is perfect, but this is a good television show. It is worth the watch. And if it keeps in line with the books, then the second season will be ten times better. The show is not the book, but it's a good show. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Coins Ideas. What did you think of the Netflix Free Body Problem Show?